All right, migrations made simple. So what we're gonna cover today in Migrations Made Simple is that we're basically gonna look at moving from WordPress.com to a single site, to a self-hosted single site. Uh, after that, we'll look at local, moving from local host, moving from a development environment. And if you were here for Conrad's talk right before me, that was a local, local environment, local development. And we're gonna move to remote host. Remote host, we're talking Bluehost, Dreamhost, GoDaddy, Site5, whatever. Uh, I have no opinions on any host, just for the record. <laughs> None whatsoever, at least on camera. <laughs> so uh, we're also gonna move from host to host. Every so often people have issues with a host and uh, they have to move. So we're gonna move from host to host, maybe maybe a host that we don't like to a host we do like. Again, not mentioning any names. Uh, then we're gonna move from a host to host, but we're gonna move it many times. So here, the, this is one time migration. This is like, you know, we're moving from like an apartment building to a house, and we stay in that house. And we ideally never move from the house, and we sell the house, and then retire in Florida. Uh, then, but here, the thing is host to host. We're constantly on the move. Constantly on the move. We're going to do uh, migrations all the time. So that's what we're going to end up with at the end. So a bit about me. I am a, I'm a developer, 12 years. I work for uh, a little, very small college in Montreal, Dawson College. Only 11,000 students. Yeah, a little, little college. Um, I'm also a teacher at that little college <laughs> uh, for eight years. And yes, I am a Trekkie. I am watching. I watch Star Trek since uh, since the next generation. Now, what are we moving? What are the components that we have to move when we have a WordPress site? So the components are the fact that we've got WordPress core. WordPress core is what you get from WordPress.org. WordPress.org, not WordPress.com. So uh, WordPress core is what powers really powers everything about the WordPress site. Then also on top of that, we have to move plugins. So moving plugins is extra functionality on top of WordPress uh, core. And on top of that is the theme, theme or themes that we have on our website. So it's basically the look and feel of our website. So we've got to move those files. Those files are uh, kind of sensitive, <coughs> meaning they're PHP files. And PHP files had they're, they're known to break. People are known to break PHP files, and then, then people get free, the people freak out, and then they call in the developers. Uh, media files. You're also, you gotta, ideally, you also have to move media files. Media files could easily be JPEGs, uh, uh, pictures, PNGs, GIFs, docs, Word documents, PDFs, um, video. You could be moving video. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to be moving our content, our posts, our pages, our custom post types, whatever the case may be. We're moving that content in something like an SQL file an S from the SQL database. So as, I was, uh, as I'm a, a Trekkie, engage. Let's do this thing. Uh, how do we migrate? We are migrating different ways. We can migrate different ways. And these are the ways I'm going to be talking about in this, this workshop, course, whatever you want to call it, the session. We're going to be migrating from uh, SFTP, with SFTP, and we're going to be migrating uh, with phpMyAdmin. Uh, we're going to be migrating with Duplicator. Also, I'm going to talk about Backup Buddy, but I'm not going to show Backup Buddy. Um, WP Migrate DB Pro, I will be talking about that tool. And uh, I will not be talking about any yes. of these things down here. Um, SCP, rsync, sed, awk. My colleagues can do all that. I can do that. But I'm not expecting you guys to be able to do that. But if you do want to talk about all these things, hit me up later. But first, we got to talk about something called DNS. DNS is critical to get people to your site. Without DNS, nobody is going on the internet. Nobody is going to any web page. So the way DNS works is basically you've got different, you've got one server that you're connected to for DNS, and then it goes to talk to other servers. Now the DNS is essentially 
a number to a name. So uh, www.dawsoncollege.qc.ca. In reality, the computers know it as 198.168.48.4. That's an IP address. It's numbers. Every computer is connected to numbers. Every phone, every device. The toasters down the road will be connected to numbers, to the internet. So numbers, so IPs, are mapped to names. So you have to have that IP mapping to a name. Now, um, here's the thing. The live, your, your live site, your public site, www.yoursite.com is mapped to a number. Welcome, Jeremy. So um, now the thing is, when we're doing migrations, an easy way to test the migration, a very easy way to test the migration is there is something in every single computer, every single device, ex well, every single device, and what happens is that it's called the host file. So this host file is essentially a file that you can control that you can actually change and override the DNS. Therefore, if you're moving, when you're, if you're moving from one host to the other, you're moving from local, the, your machine, your dev, dev machine, to a remote host, to a host on the internet, you can change your host file. And you can actually mimic what's going to happen in when you move, after the move. You can forecast what's going to happen. You can foresee problems and then fix them before you really flip the switch. Now, um, you've got to do this admi as administrator. The thing is, to edit this host file, you have to do it as administrator. Um, and there is definitely a resource out there that is really step by step that will walk you through the process and give you documentation as per how to do this. So therefore, and by the way, you do not have to copy this down. My slides are already on SlideShare. Okay, so all this is on SlideShare, and it's just, just, yeah. Anyways, so what happens when you, you follow the process of editing your DNS? You're editing your host file. You follow that process, and then basically you can forecast to see what the problems are. Now, um, oh, the just while we're talking about DNS, there is actually a website out there, whatsmydns.com. That's a site where you can actually test to see whether the change of the DNS, meaning you're pointing this IP to that IP, to that host, you can find out if that change has gone worldwide, if that change has actually taken place all across the world. So that's a good resource to try to see if your, your time frame, there is a time frame that it does take. It's not instantaneous for this change to let the world know that you're, you've moved from one host to the see so it's about a 48-hour change at the worst, at the most. At the best, six minutes, five minutes. Uh, so what you're going to have to do is, is definitely look for this, test it, and then pray and hope and, and just wait for that DNS to propagate out. Uh, so far, any questions on the DNS stuff? Going once, twice, sold. OK, so we're moving from WordPress.com. Uh, WordPress.com is Different. Um, a service from a service by Automatic that essentially allows you to create a blog on their service. Um, but the thing is, once you've uh, once you've elevated yourself to a certain level, um, you need to move somewhere. You need to gr you're growing. Therefore, you need to you need to take your service, take your site somewhere else. Well, WordPress.org allows you to download and install WordPress. Now, um, these are the differences between WordPress.org and WordPress.com. You basically, uh, a WordPress.org site ultimately could be as cheap as five bucks. I'm paying five bucks for a host, um, and I have Word. I can get WordPress.org. I can get the, the install file. I can get it for free, which means my host, my website, cost me five bucks. Uh, but then again, when you work enterprise, when you work in the enterprise. Yes, when you work on the Enter Starship Enterprise, <laughs> uh, yeah, it could easily run in the twenty thousand dollar range, because there's a lot of functionality, there's a lot of things to look at, there's a lot of work to be done. So it could really be a hefty project. Uh, but then again, WordPress.com is free. Now, themes, themes. You have the ultimate selection in themes um, on WordPress.org, meaning your self-hosted site. You can do whatever you want. There's no restrictions. 
Uh, WordPress.com, yeah, there's restrictions. You're limited in theme choice. You can customize a bit here and there, but not too much. Uh, plugins. Well, there's, last I heard, I don't know what, uh, thousands of plugins, hundreds of thousands of plugins in the repo. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of plugins out there, a lot of choice. You can install whatever you want, and then, then, then things are going to either work or not, but that's a whole different ballgame, whole different talk. Um, now, WordPress.com, you're very limited in plugins. There are some plugins, but not much. And you certainly can't upload any plugins. You can't give them plugins for them to use and, and work for your site. It's not going to work. They don't want you to do that. They can't, we, you can't do that. Uh, uh, with control for a self-hosted, yeah, you've got full control. And on the flip side, you have very limited control. Now, basically, as you can see, maintenance, backups, and SSL security, all that is essentially the same thing. .com, it's basically managed by a third party. It's managed by the host. It's managed by Automatic. Um, Automatic is the same people that are powering uh, sites within CNN's .com, sites within uh, New York Times .com. Um, there's other .coms that I'm forgetting about, TechCrunch, um, and so on. So they're pretty big sites. Now, self-hosted, you're managing or paying for everything. So that's where it's definitely going to be on your responsibility to look after and, and make sure that's happening, whichever way you want. Now, there's two terms that we're going to use in, uh, in migrating sites, exporting and importing. So exporting is basically you're, you're downloading information from a site. You're downloading information from a site and you're importing, meaning you're uploading, sending information to another site, a secondary copy. Now, uh, this is actually uh, WordPress.com. This is the site of WordPress.com. And what you need to do is you need to go to Tools and then Export. And then click that button, Start the Export. It's going to ask you. It's going to ask you about what kind of content do you want to actually send out. Do you want to send out all the content? Do you want to export all of the content? Do you want to export just your posts, just your pages, or just export the feedback? Now, uh, when you download that export file, you're going to get a file there. And that's great. Save the file. You're going to need it. But here's the thing. There's one little catch. There is also a, a, a feature called delete site. Whatever you do, please do yourself a favor right after the download. Do not delete your site. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't delete your site because what's going to happen is that the export is going to make references to this site that's still online. So this site has to be active when you're doing the importing. So when you do the download, you're not actually downloading media. You're not downloading images. You're not downloading PDFs. So what's going to happen is that you're just downloading posts pages, content, which means you can't delete the site. And if you delete the site without uh, doing the import, you're going to be, uh, you'll have to register a support ticket with Automatic at that point because it's, the site's no longer active and you're trying to call it and it's going to, it's going to go to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> Hate to say it. So uh, we've, I've definitely jumped a few steps here. Um, I have a live uh, site, a live self-hosted site running right now on my screen right now and um, I'm going to click on import now. On the importer, uh, because WordPress is so popular, what they've done is you can actually import from different sources. So the source that you're going to choose is actually the WordPress source and that will work from WordPress.com. Now uh, the WordPress.com source, the WordPress.com source means you actually means you actually need a plugin. This is actually a plugin which you're going to have to install. It's, it's a one-click install, therefore get the plugin installed. And then you're going to see this. Ultimately, you're going to see this to do the physical import. So the physical import is essentially you choose your file, which you ideally have at this point. You're going to choose your file and you're going to upload your file and import. Now, there's this one little caveat here whereby it's the maximum Size. The maximum size of the file in my screen is 64 megabytes. This can be changed. Uh, this can be changed. So if you've got a file 
that's bigger than 64 megabytes, you're going to have to contact your new host or, or make some changes in your local host to make it actually work for bigger than 64 megabytes. Um, automatic support has actually told me it is feasible to go above 64 megs on WordPress.com. So uh, if you've got something bigger than 64, you're going to have to definitely make some changes, make some adaptations for that. Uh, so far, so good. So far, so good. We've imported our content. Import, ideally, also imported our images. Now, here's the fun stuff. We're going from local host, local host, to the remote host. Remote host being, you know, a host on the internet. So, if, for example, yep. you started by saying, yeah, give me my posts and my pages and everything. All content. All content. Yep. Well, the 64 megs is actually really just your posts and pages, to tell you the truth. Um, and with, especially for local, you can definitely change it. Uh, and if it's a remote host that you're sending to, then you need support to change it. But ultimately, uh, this. But is that so, a way around it? Is what I'm no, uh, the way around it is contact support. Uh, because, and on top of that, actually, what you can do is there is, um, there is a way with HT access. And HT access allows you to override those uh, values, so you can actually can increase the maximum, uh, the maximum file size or maximum upload file size. Maximum upload, maximum upload size. Some hosts won't let you override it in HT access. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but then that's definitely a support request, because at that point, uh, if you're only going to do posts but not pages, it, it's going to break other things at that point. Okay, and on top of that, the 64 megs does not include any images, doesn't include the PDFs, doesn't include a media. It's just content. And content meaning posts and pages. Quick question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, let's say I already have a self-hosted self uh, WordPress site, and I already okay. posts, and I already created pages on that, and then I remember, hey, on my WordPress.com site, I have some valuable content. Very good question. Absolutely, very good question. I'm assuming. Uh, pretty sure it's gonna. It shouldn't delete. No, it shouldn't delete. But it might. Uh, no, it's pre. It's gonna add. It's gonna add because everything's gonna just add on top, and everything's gotta automatically increment. Yeah, it's just gonna keep on going. So it'll just add. Uh, you might that you might get some duplicates, but you'll but you can at that point start cleaning up okay. your duplicates. What might happen is the content he's already got on the site that he wants to import might get lost, and he only has the content that is. Okay, so here's here's the cav here's the, actually the safety trick: backup. Do a backup <laughs> before you do your imports. <laughs> Absolutely, do a backup before you do imports. So. If, if, if things go not the way you want, automatically restore your backup, okay? Guaranteed. Thank you. Okay, so local host, remote host. So we're taking remote host, uh, sorry, local host. We're taking local host and we're sending it up to the remote host. We're sending it up to a real hosting company that has real servers and that's really on the internet. Now, uh, out of curiosity, show of hands, who's not using FTP, not using. Therefore, you, you are not using FTP. You are using SFTP already. You are using FTP. You are using SFTP. OK, everybody else, you need to look into SFTP. You need to look into SFTP because FTP, File Transfer Protocol, is insecure. So ideally. Ideally, if you guys tried to connect to your site with FTP, and especially at Humber, if I wanted to, I could be running software on my computer, and I can go grab your username and password to your FTP. Once I've got your username and password, oh, I can start installing plugins to do whatever I want them to do. Therefore, SFTP is secure FTP. At that point, 
your communication to the server is encrypted, I would not be able to grab your username and password. Guaranteed. And really, it's actually just a check mark sometimes on the program. You just have to go secure FTP. That's it. That's all. It's, it's nothing really uh, hard about that part. The problem is actually the other side. It's the server side. It's the hosting company. So if they don't let you do secure FTP, well, then you might want to start asking and considering another host. Because uh, secure FTP, especially if you work in coffee shops, especially if you work on Wi-Fi networks, uh, that's an easy way to get your site compromised. And that's people looking for passwords, people looking for this kind of stuff. Uh, resume slideshow. OK. All right. All right, so here. So SFTP. So right off the bat, yes, please, don't use FTP. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to start your FTP, SFTP program. Uh, you could use FileZilla. You could use CyberDuck. You can use Transmit. Um, there are definitely a lot of programs out there for SFTP. And uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find the files, the, the install files, the WordPress core files. You're going to have to install, find them on your hard drive. Now, if you're using WAMP, if you're using WAMP, you're going to find them in C, the C drive, WAMP, the folder WAMP, and then within the folder WAMP, the folder triple W. That's where your files ultimately are if you're using WAMP. Um, I can't exactly say where else they might be on different uh, installations for local host. Um, but definitely, if you are developing locally, you might you probably know where they are at this point. So go to them within the SFTP program. Um, and then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take those files and upload them to a server at that point. For like a certain web host on the internet, you have to upload those to the server. Now, uh, when you do the upload, basically what you're doing is you're grabbing files, you're highlighting files, and then you're literally dragging and dropping onto the server side. And then once you drag and drop onto the server, they're web accessible. They are actually uh, accessible on the internet. So you're going to do that for the entire setup. Uh, WordPress core, all your plugins, all your themes, uh, your media. That's what you're going to upload to the server. Now, the thing is, along with uh, WordPress core and all the plugins and themes, you've got a database to worry about. Now, the database is essentially where all of the posts and pages and content is stored. Now, to get to the database, what you can do is actually you can go through something called PHP MyAdmin. Uh, PHP MyAdmin is accessible ideally th through a cPanel, a control panel, on various web hosts. So what happens is that you can get to PHP MyAdmin. This is essentially what it looks like, give or take. And uh, through PHP MyAdmin, you can do what, what can we do with PHP MyAdmin? What do we need to do? Anybody know? Export your database. We are exporting the database. Absolutely. Now, um, along with PHP MyAdmin, if you're comfortable with software, comfortable with development, you can also use Heidi SQL. Heidi SQL allows you to connect to the database, and it's less painful than a PHP MyAdmin. That's a, uh, that's a Windows program, free, by the way. Uh, Navicat, on, uh, Navicat is actually cross-platform. And uh, that I believe you have to pay for. Uh, MySQL Workbench also is PC, and it's also free. So uh, database, we are exporting the database. OK, cool. So right after the export of the database, what do we have to do at that point? We're exporting from localhost, and then we are doing what to remote host? Importing. importing, absolutely. We're importing into the remote host. And ideally, again, through PHP MyAdmin on the remote host side. OK, now also what we have to do is because it's a remote host, it's a different host. Therefore, ultimately, we have to change a couple in bits of information, and the, namely the database name. So the database name uh, is essentially where all the tables, all the information stored. So you have to change where that is. There's, it's a very specific naming convention per server, per site, per host. Uh, and the host will tell you that at that point. Uh, the username, password, same thing. The host will tell you all that. All this information, the host will tell you. But this is just a visual to show you 
ultimately, we actually have to change it in the wp-config file. Okay, so there's a file called wp-config. You go into the file, just look for database name, username, password, and host. You'll find that information in quotes, double quotes probably, and then just change the, num change the information that you've got. Okay. One particular host I was working with, they demanded that I change the prefix back okay. previously, but other hosts seem okay with whatever prefix. Ideally, it should be okay uh, with anything else but WP. And uh, if, you're really if you really want to secure your site, if you really want to be paranoid about security, then uh, you should probably change the, the prefix, as you call it, as, as they call it too. Um, ultimately, with proper security measures, beforehand, uh, having WP is not necessarily a huge security risk. Uh, assuming everything else higher up is secured. And there's proper firewalls, there's proper access permissions, all that fun stuff. So uh, for ultimate security, yes, change the prefix. But in a migration, definitely when you're migrating, don't change the prefix, whatever you do. because. Well, this is just a visual of what you have because when you're migrating, when you're migrating, remember, we're migrating, we're, we're moving information, we're moving, we're not changing while we move. This part we cannot change. If you start changing that, if things are going to break. I can guarantee you that. So when you move it, don't change it. But, 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 here's actually something you do have to change. In WordPress database, what's going to happen is that it actually stores a couple bits of information. In the WordPress database, it actually stores uh, the site name. So meaning uh, www.dawsoncollege.qc.ca. The site name is in the database. It's, it's one of the things that annoys me about WordPress is that I basically have to always change it when I move sites around. So that's one thing. And also the file path. There is, uh, it, it, WordPress, database holds the file path of where the files are stored. So especially when you're going from Windows to a server out on the internet, the file path on Windows would be like, you know, C, C colon slash WAMP triple W. Well, on a, uh, on, a, on a host out there on the internet, it could be var triple W HTML. It's completely different, which means at that point, the path has to be changed. It's not easy to change that path, even for me. I cannot easily change that path because of the fact the way it's stored in the database. I need a tool to change the path. So this is a tool that you can use, free tool out there on the internet. So what you do is essentially post migration, post moving the files over. So you've connected, going back a step, you've connected this up, the database, is fine. It can read that. It can read the uh, the database. WordPress reads the database, but then we have to install this little folder, this this piece of little software, into a folder like something like this. So you've got your WP admin, you've got your WP content folder, WP includes, and then you've got a second a, a f another folder which contains this piece of software. It's going to connect to the database for WordPress. And then what you can do is you can change the web address and you can change the path. Now, if you don't change the path, it's not a big deal. In fact, I've, I've tested it. It works. You don't need to change the path. If you don't change the web address, if you don't change the site URL, you cannot log in. It's going to redirect you. It's going to keep on thinking it's still on the old server, old site, old address. So it won't be, you won't be able to log in at that point. So you have to change the two, you have to change at the bare minimum, the site name, the site uh, URL. So far so good? Cool. All right. Now we're gonna go from host to host. So this is that basically when you've got the issue of, oh, I don't like my host, something's going wrong, I gotta move. Now this is a one-time migration. We're going from host to host, one time. Now, there is a plugin out there that will actually help you do this in a much simpler way. Uh, it's called Duplicator. And this plugin 
What it does is that it basically builds a package for you. This package, literally, you can take it, you can move it, and put it on the other host. And it'll do a full install, full, um, it'll just do everything it needs to do, and you're good to go. Now, you, you can actually do this multiple times. You can actually build many packages over time. It allows for that. Now, when you build the package, it's going to go through step two. And this is step two, where it actually will show you how much um, of, the, of, the, of the site you have. And what happens is that basically, um, basically it is taking the database. It is taking the uh, media files. It's including the media files in the uh, export, in the download. And it's taking everything. Then what happens is that uh, it is, yes, it is breaking it up visually, but it's still, it's one package. And then finally, we get the physical package. We can download the package, which is actually called an archive. But we need to also download the installer. There is one file, install.php, that goes alongside the package, goes alongside the archive, and you will run the uh, installer.php file to really install and do what it needs to do. Okay, and this is actually what it looks on the on the remote side, on the other side. So you've basically uh, you've gone from your crappy host, you've done the package, you've got the download of how many megs, gigs, whatever it is, and you've uploaded it via SFTP. You've uploaded it to the uh, the remote host, the the new host, the good host, ideally. <laughs> and um, you run this. You basically feed it some credentials. You feed it username, password, and uh, name. And it'll just do what it needs to do, and you are up and running. Except, except, except for one thing. What are we missing at that point? There's one major thing we're missing. No. DNS, absolutely. So what happens, what it doesn't do is it doesn't modify the DNS. It doesn't tell the world that you've moved sites. Which means before switching the DNS, before switching and telling the world that you moved, what are we going to do? Pardon? Check, site. check the site, yes, but how do we check the site? Change the DNS? Uh, no, forget changing the DNS. No, this is before DNS changes, before DNS changes. What do we do? Change your host file. Point the host file to your new host with the, new, with the old, well, with your name. Point the host file to your actual DNS name, sorry, point the host file to your address with the new IP. With that new IP that you're going to get from the new host, plop that into your host file with your name, and then it's going to resolve to the new, uh, to the new host. Am I sending that the file we create with a duplicator, am yep. I putting it in the public HTML file? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, definitely. Installer.php right beside it. Size limit, size limitation. Um, I haven't seen size limitations. Uh, if you're running into the gigs, I'd be concerned. If you're running into the gigs, you. At that point, it's. At that point, I wouldn't use duplicator uh, because you're going to probably get timeouts to create the package. So I wouldn't at that point use duplicator. I'd use SFTP for downloading, uploading, PHP my admin, yeah. Can I ask you that? Sure, please. If you plug in UNH3 with a free version, you yeah. can pack up to 200 megabytes. Okay. After that, there's paid version based on Pro. If you pay for that, it, you can pack it up to 2 gigs. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Uh, but still, I just warn you, you're probably going to run into timeout issues with the hosting provider that you're coming from because of the fact that it might take too long to create the two gig file. You warn the host ahead of time. You know. They could, they might, yeah, they might. They might. Yeah, yeah, ideally. If they're good, still a relatively good host, they might. The most likely work on at this stage, while locally it's just the limit is the small gigs, right? Right, ideally, yeah, no, ideally. But you're right, there could be very big uh, movie files or, you know, a lot of images. Yeah, that could be a problem. Yep. Uh, good, very good question, Google. Google, du Google, WordPress space duplicator. When you get a 
the host file, that same host file I was working with and talking about uh, right over here. That host file. That host file. But that's local on my... Yeah, but even, even if you're going from host to host, from like, like uh, yeah, 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 company to company, you're still, talk, you're still asking DNS. Your computer, no matter what, no matter what, your computer is still asking DNS, what is the IP address for mydomain.com? Now, the DNS is going to come back with an IP address that might be from GoDaddy. But you're saying, wait, no, IP, you're saying in your host file, I want the IP address that, uh, for my domain to be from Bluehost. So you're overriding. You're saying you're, that your website is actually at a different IP address, only on your computer. But that's, but after, once you're done, once you're done the migrations, absolutely, please delete, yes. But at the... I don't understand why my local computer is involved. Because oh, you're... I'm going from this guy to that guy. Agreed, so. but your web browser, your web browser queries, asks the DNS all the time. Every host single web... Overrides what's going on host, host file overrides. It's checking the file first. Essentially, whatever, no matter every single time you enter into Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, it's checking the host file first. What is the IP address for mydomain.com? If it's not there, it goes to DNS outside in the world. If you, for yeah, yeah, yeah. If you force it, if you force it in there into the host file, you can say my ho my website's at GoDaddy, or Bluehost, or DreamHost, or whatever host. Um, it's actually very simple. Okay. You go to GoDaddy, yep. And then you change your main server. Voila, that's it. Agreed, but you can't test. That's the problem. You can't test. You can. But that no, you cannot test because. I've done this many times. Every time it works. But the problem is, is that everybody else, everybody else is seeing might see might see a site that may not be working to its full capacity. Agreed, absolutely, for the public. Yeah, but the point is, is that when you're editing your host file, you're creating a different scenario for yourself so that you can, you're basically putting a sort of a, a temporary detour for your own browser. This way, you can, oh. test, you can test your site right, on right, the right, new right. address before, yeah. before. Everybody, yeah. else, the public, it's everybody else is still going to the, to the old now, sites. Yeah. yeah. And, now, thank you. and now. your host yeah. file ordinarily doesn't contain much of anything. Right? No. Go, go to the other, go to the new host. And then when you're done, yeah. when you're done, you want to get rid of that yeah. so that you can see it the way everyone else. Yeah, when absolutely. When you flip your DNS uh, 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 properly from your uh, registrar, then you can bother to get rid of it as your local right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then, yeah, then you don't need it. Absolutely. Nobody ever tells you the host file overrides everything. I yeah. struggle with that line. My client's looking at the new stuff, and I'm not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now here's the thing. Um, it's great that you can move from host to host. That's fine. That's great. But now, what happens when you want to actually build a site and you want to test and you want to work and, you, and you're actually working with the client on a long-term project? So they're going to put in content on their main website. They're going to put in content, they're going to put in content, but you need the content to develop and, and work with. You want to build new features, but you don't have their content. So this is where another plugin comes in because we're going to go from production. Production is considered the public website where the clients could be putting information in. Or they can be putting information on a staging environment. Staging is good to have if you can do it, but if you don't, not a big deal. But development, dev, you need to have a development environment. Development environment is where you can definitely play, test, blow up, and really nobody cares. So what's the difference between staging and development? Staging and development is basically the code is production worthy, but the content is being fed into it from from the clients. You're staging. You're preparing. So if you, if you kept track of your development, same client, you just do both those stages. 
the thing is, do you want do you want clients to be modifying your con the content directly in development? Probably not. So what we need to do is we need to get that all that fresh content into Dev. So another plugin uh, that I actually do use all the time is WP Migrate DB Pro. This plugin allows us to sync content from a site to our local environment, to our local uh, test environment. So we, we're not taking from one site like you know mydomain.com and putting it in um, my other domain.com. This is going from like triple W down to our local or to our test environment. Um, which by the way works should work really well. I haven't tested it with Bitnami. It should work really well at that point to pull the content on in. And here I'm pulling the content in from a website that I have with a colleague. And what happens is that here's, remember I was talking about changing stuff? Well, this is what we're changing. We're changing the web address and we're changing uh, the file path. Automatically done for us. Now, what happens is that you in here. So WordPress has an admin email. And in that admin email, in my, if I'm copying the content, if I'm copying her stuff, do I want her admin email in my environment? No. Therefore, what happens is I'm, I'm going to add a row, and I'm going to actually add her email in this location, and then replace it with my email, so that I can actually have all the email related to WordPress on my environment come to me, not her. Now, um, the tables, you can do tables specifically. You can specifically say post types. That's, not, that's at a higher level. But what's really cool with this plugin is that you can migrate media files. Uh, you can compare, you can, compa you can sync up, compare the files, download when, ne when necessary. You can remove everything locally and just pull down whatever's there on production. And uh, yeah, this, this plugin is definitely really worth it. Uh, just to let you know, there is a coupon code out there on Twitter. There's a coupon code, you can use this for 20% off. Uh, it's a limited time coupon, so definitely if you're going to look into it, act quick. Uh, personally, I, while personal is good, I, I wouldn't go with personal because as you can see, media files is in the developer package. But the time that you're going to save for the money you're spending is the, what you're going to be gaining on. So 200 bucks, a, uh, 200 bucks one shot, and then um, you're saving time, saving uh, resources. And every year after, if you choose to keep on going, at that point, there is a reduction already on the renewal. Um, and now, we're going to get to the end of it. So after you've done your host file stuff, you can check your site. Oh wait, what are we seeing? White screen of death. We're seeing white screen of death. And if you actually, by the way, if you did the DNS changes, guess what? Everybody would see white screen of death. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, well, then we'll have to. You'll have to tell me your process, and we'll have to confirm. Uh, so, white screen of death. What can you do to mitigate white screen of death? Update all the plugins. Update all the themes. Update core. Update everything. Uh, check to see that the host one and host two, meaning for, well, from where you're going to where you're, where you're coming from, make sure they got the same or similar PHP versions, because that could be causing problems. Uh, deactivate all your plugins. Deactivate all your plugins. Pull them out of your plugins folder. That's basically deactivating plugins. Pull them out of your, content, your plugins folder. Uh, and if it's a plugin problem, well, then once you deactivate or pull them out, immediately your site will work or it won't. Uh, same thing for themes. Deactivate your themes. Pull it out of the themes folder. See what happens. Also, switch to 2015 or 2016 or 2017, whatever the case may be. Because uh, if it works for default theme, then you know your theme that you're using is the problem. Or something in there is a problem. Uh, you yeah. Like SFTP. SFTP, remove if you can't get into the back end. If you can't, if you can't get into the back end, you're going to have to use SFTP, pull them on out. Um, reset the permalinks. Sometimes permalinks will cause you issues. It's going to cause you grief, but it won't cause you. Uh, white screen problems, but it's going to cause you grief. Um, HD access file. There is something called an HD access file, and that HD access file could cause you grief too. 
more in like routing and getting things there. And uh, there, was a, there was a post on Facebook a little while ago, and this person had a problem, went through these steps. Ironically, it was actually an index, a blank index.html file alongside index.php. And because of the hosting, index.html got pulled first, not index.php. So therefore, the WordPress never loaded. And a blank index.html got pulled up, served. Oh, white screen of death. Um, and occasionally, this doesn't usually happen, but there could be a maintenance file in there. You want to make sure, and, and if it's last, this could be a last resort, delete the maintenance file. It's when you're doing upgrades. It puts it in there. And um, if, you haven't, if you haven't resolved the problems at that point, you're definitely going to have to modify at that point wp-config, add in some debug lines. There are some plugins that can help you do that, but the problem is in th at this point, your site's kind of tanked. Your site's kind of not working. I'd rather do it in wp-config and just really hit the, get the problems and see it on screen. Uh, you can check an error log via SFTP. Check your host. Check with your host to find out what's happening there. And you can, or you can probably see it through cPanel. Because in the error log, you're going to see an error log. And in there will be the errors that you can start Googling for. Uh, there's a couple resources that you can try that you can look at uh, on, our, on WordPress Codex. Definitely there's a site for a uh, page for moving WordPress. Uh, he wrote a really exhaustive blog post, uh, Jason, Jason something, <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's something that you should probably take a look at and read, and, and it might give you further insights into moving WordPress. So uh, I thank you very much, and I do wish you I do live long and prosper.